Hello everyone, uh, my name is Shelley and on behalf of EMCC Global, can I welcome you to this GPS dialogue hosted by Dr. Alison Hodge. It's wonderful to see so many people. Alison is a coaching supervisor working across the world um, with supervisors in training and supervising one-to-one. -one. And her work is grounded in evidence-based research and practice. And this session looks at how we can stay fit for purpose as a supervisor and within the role of group supervision. The topic extremely relevant to all of us and I know you will enjoy it. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Alison. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelley. And hello, everybody. It's um, amazing and gorgeous to see you all. Thank you. Um, at your various times of the day or night or mornings or yesterday or tomorrow. <laughs> I'm always struck when we come into these big sessions that um, how um, how disparate geographically we are, and yet we all share such a lot potentially in common, and we have our own individuality that we bring to this. As some of you know, if you've been in these dialogue series before, um, one of the th one of the reasons that I wanted to um, be involved in in a dialogue series is partly my own aversion to slides. And I personally find, I, I find it's very hard to stay engaged with slides, particularly after we've had a year of this. <laughs> and I hate to admit, sometimes if there are slides on, I go walk about, I go and get a cup of coffee. And um, I, I find it very difficult to listen and concentrate and read all at the same time. So I think there are two and a half slides that will be available at the end um, as points of reference. Um, but this is very much an opportunity for me to share a perspective and then to invite you collectively and in small groups to have a conversation around the, this theme today, which I don't know about you folks, but increasingly I've noticed as a supervisor how the whole question of how are we taking care of ourselves to be able to take care of our clients is just boggling. It is like a big saucepan boy coming to the boil, I found. And in, when I was chatting with Nicola, uh, who was our, con our, our convener of these dialogue series, she said, well, why don't you do something on keeping fit for purpose? Um, and so that's what we're going to do and look at the role of group supervision. And knowing many of you, I know that you uh, are practicing as supervisors, you're practicing as coaches or mentors or both. And so this session is an opportunity to, to do some per personal exchange and reflection for yourselves with each other and with me, and to look at this question, how are we keeping ourselves fit for purpose? So before we kick off, or I say any more, a couple of things, I think if, as you're arriving, um, one is that, uh, confidentiality. I um, know it's speaking to the converted, but I hold a very strong belief that you're welcome to chat about what goes on here and it remains anonymized. You'll be going into breakouts and sharing perhaps personal perspectives. And again, may I invite you to A, be mindful of what matters for you, but equally respectful of how anybody else might be showing up in your breakouts. Um, I think we've all become so accustomed to this medium and this method that I, I know I'm preaching to the converted, but I think there's something really important to, uh, to, re to respect how each of us are coming here today and what we might be bringing in terms of our own pressures, our own demands, and thus those of our clients. And as I sit here, I'm aware as a coaching supervisor, I'm modeling. So some of you may, be, you may be aware of you two are holding this question of how do we hold respect and confidentiality at the same time, encouraging participation and dialogue. So at this stage, what, I, what I'm going to do, if I may, because we're a large group, I wonder if 
Uh, and thank you for all of you who have said hi in the chat. That's lovely. Can, I'm going to ask you to do a poll so I get a feel for uh, what experience is here. But when I look at it, I think we've got hundreds of years of practice experience here. Wow, how, how rich is that? Um, so, Mike, could I ask you, Mike, sorry, hang on, I've asked, Mike, Mike has just now gone behind my pole, but Mike is my sidekick techno wizard, um, Hi, and Mike Smith is the Operations Director of Coaching Supervision Academy, where, as many of you know, I'm a member of faculty, and he's my right-hand man doing the techno today. Um, so, the poll is, do you have experience of group supervision? Great. So a number of you are supervisors, a number of you are participating in group supervision. A lot of you are doing both supervising and you're participating and some of you are completely new to this. Great. Thank you. So where do we go? Um, thank you, Mike. So we have a feel for who's in the room in this large room. Um, and let me, let me outline what we're going to do, actually. What I would like us to do is a, a quick round of introduction in breakout so that you can at least say hello to three or four folks and together name what are the questions that you are curious about that bring, bring you to the session. And we'll have about 10 minutes in the breakout and then we'll come back. And then after that, I'll do a bit of talking and responding and we might have some commentary and plenary with each of some of you. Uh, then I'd like to have a, a, a breakout around how are you keeping yourselves fit for purpose? Because I think we can be very skilled in caring for others. And sometimes I pick up in supervision at what cost to us. Um, and what part does supervision play? And as many of you know, I'm passionate about supervision, but it's not the be all and end all. And when we come back after introductions, I'll, I'll share with you my own a map of keeping fit for purpose that may add to our conversation. So, and then we'll have, a, we'll have another breakout and we'll talk about something else. I'm guided by what comes into the chat after each of the breakouts and there will be time after a breakout for people to add things into breakout into the chat. So, Mike, can I ask you, I think you're now going to be randomly scattered into breakout. Yes. And the questions that Mike has put here at the moment, what brings you to the session and what questions are you holding, they too will get put into the breakout to remind you, I don't know about you, I can go into a breakout and I've forgotten the question I'm meant to be addressing. So. The I've, questions will be going in there. Just added the questions to the chat box for everyone. We'll open the rooms, 10 minutes in the rooms. I'll give you the two minute notification so you've got a, a bit of countdown before they close. All right. Thank you. Um, are we all back, Mike? Uh, yes, I think we are. Okay, so what we'd like, now like to do is give you just a minute or so, just quietly, and if you would like to offer the questions that you would hope we might get around to answering. Can I give you all a minute to offer those and pop them in the chat? And I'm not going to say anything for a minute. And if you choose not to, that's fine, but it would be great to see what questions are here with us. questions. Thank you.
what came out of the breakout room for me was that we could have spent, the three of us could have spent the rest of the afternoon chatting and talking about some of the themes that are here. And what I'm hearing is a range from you about what place does group play alongside individual supervision? What place does, how do we manage individual, uh, different levels of experience in groups? Um, is groups uh, is group supervision the be all and end all? And how do we do this on uh, in virtual? And I think that's a really interesting question. Um, and I'm aware that we may not get to answer all of these questions. So I trust that what I offer, and then we continue to talk about some more, will add to your own reflections and your own considerations about what what reflection on practice might mean and what keeping fit for purpose might mean. Several of you have said, what do we mean by keeping fit for purpose? And I'm sure I'm not speaking uniquely here and I'm finding it in the groups that I have. I have several groups working with me at the moment. And the recurring theme, of course, depending on where you are in the world, is the impact of corona, either its continued impact and or where places are fortunate enough for people to be gradually transitioning out of pure lockdown or confined to Zoom and the excitement and the contemplation of Oh, I can meet people in person and we could work in person and the coaches and supervisors I'm working with are asking that of themselves and they're very aware and hugely sensitive to um, the burgeoning of pressure and mental health conditions that we may see to an extent that we may not have seen with such so many people affected as we're seeing at the moment. Um, and the, as I was preparing for today, I was thinking about the words that were coming up for me around group supervision or our role as a practitioner is actually this huge need I'm sure all of us are facing for contact, for connection, and for collaboration. And not necessarily in that order, but those are the words that jumped out. And of course, they all start with the C, so connection, contact, collaboration. Um, because this, it, it, it's hugely demanding what we are living through at a human level, quite apart from thus the impact that it has on us in our professional practice. Um, and I ask this question of myself, how am I keeping myself fit for practice? Now, one of the, oh, and so Rita, you've added compassion. Yes, thank you very much. Sorry if I've missed other people's editions, but yep, compassion is gorgeous too and absolutely crucial. Um, in thinking about group supervision and the theme for today, actually, I was drawn back to my doctoral research in coaching supervision, which I completed in 2014. Now, for some of you, this may look a bit like a, a, a city underground map. <laughs> Maybe that was part of, of what it was at the time, but the findings from my research were all about, as a, as a doctoral candidate and as a practitioner, how, how do we keep fit for purpose and what part does supervision play? So let me briefly talk you through it. In down the left hand side, you can see the support that I got as a as a research, as a doctoral researcher. So I have my um, professional supervisor, and I continue to see her throughout. I had two advisors at the university, and then I had a third advisor who um, 
provided great learning because she and I bumped quite early on when she challenged me and said, uh, when I wasn't sure about my understanding of ontology and epistemology, she challenged me to say, well, I wonder if you've got the intellectual agility to do this, Alison. Um, at which point I sort of fell over backwards and had to seek a lot of help from the right hand side of my professional development because I was obviously in doubt myself. And this may not seem to have any connection with what we're living in at the moment, but there, they were my, my academic path, if you like. And I see myself very much as a practitioner, um, a scholar practitioner rather than an immersed in, in academia. Um, I learned a huge amount, but then we went over to the other side, to the professional development side. And you can see there that I unintentionally, unconsciously, I built myself a team. I had two folks who were my critical friends. I had a peer friend who was a supervisor. I had professional friends, friends and colleagues, clients and co-researchers, and my family. And what was invaluable was no one of those people served my total need. It was a collective that supported me in my ongoing well-being to be and kept me fit for purpose to work all the way through what was a six-year commitment in the end. But the important piece about this is the core ingredients and qualities. And I, I can see that Rita has again added compassion. I don't think I quite understood compassion at the time. It was sort of 2008 to 14, and I've clearly learned a lot more about it now. Um, but the ingredients in the relationships were at the heart of this, which was they were established, we had trust and respect and safety, we had curiosity, it was reciprocal, it was generative dialogue rather than corrective or manipulative or controlling or one up one down. And the experience was over a pr protracted period and at the heart of this was the quality of the relationships that enabled me to tread the path. And I sort of surprised myself in bringing this to you today because it's something I developed five or six years ago, but it seems to resonate in the question of what part does group supervision, what part does supervision per se play in keeping us all well, fit, resourceful, to be able to do this work. So let me come out of there. That's available, that picture is available. So Mike, if we could come out of there again. Um, let me pause for a moment. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to doing all this talking. I'd far rather we, we, had, a, we had a conversation. So <laughs> um, let me take a moment and see what's landed or if somebody would like to make a contribution or speak, you know, just please come in and we'll, let's have a little bit of big dialogue before I then invite you to go back into breakouts. This is Maureen. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, Alison, this really resonates. Uh, so thank you very much. And I'm hearing uh, fit for purpose is a sense of community, community of practice, that 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 emotional support. Yeah. So that take away for the moment. And uh, thank you for sharing. Great. Thank you very much, Maureen. Would anybody else like to add to this? I have uh, Anna Perek speaking. I have Thank you for for noticing that that it it needs a it needs a group it needs a family it needs more than one you you cannot expect that one person would be able to give you whatever you need uh, in terms you you 
in terms of your well-being as a supervisor, as a supervisor or coach, mm -hmm. you need more. You need some criticism, you need some logic, but you need some love and compassion and, and closeness from other people when, when, when things are going not very well. So, so knowing that, that, we can really uh, combine that from our uh from our network all around even all around the world we don't need even to know these people if we work together in terms of uh of supervision only we can just stay supervisors friends that's a that's a great talk great thank you very much well it sounds as though where we're heading might be interesting and useful for you um and somebody jeremy lewis has just said it takes a village to raise a child what a lovely <laughs> notion um and actually what about our child and i say that about ourselves because i think we are hugely capable of and i hear this so often in supervision alice and i just want to help and I say, that's terrific. And how are you taking care of yourself? And I've just started two new supervision groups in the last month or so. And in each case, we've spent a good period of time getting started with A, the acknowledgement that we're in very demanding circumstances, globally, locally, family-wise, and with our clients. And then how do I invite our, the, the, the folks who come to group with me to say, and actually I in some nice neglect myself. I actually need to give myself more time or I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm overloaded. Um, and because it's, it's all pretty overwhelming and a bit overloading. And so there's something about it's okay to say, I, I need to take care of myself. Uh, I, I, I don't know where this is coming from. I didn't know, so, you know, I love these things because I don't know where, what I'm going to be talking about necessarily. But I'm suddenly remembering when I first set up in business in my first year, many years ago, and I was working all hours at God Sends and I got to the end of the year and I, I felt like a soggy, saturated sponge that couldn't think. I was so tired. And I thought, ah, oh, if I don't take, if I don't work, I don't earn. And if I don't rest, I'm not going to be fit enough to work. I might get sick. And I, I think there's something we perhaps overlook or brush aside or think well you know other people are more important or I've got this is more important but there's something about how do we come back to self in the interest and commitment to being available to the other and in a way that's what I see these conversations about that it's okay to talk about how are we looking after ourselves and keeping fit for purpose because the work that we are doing is absolutely invaluable it's hugely powerful and we need to be looking after ourselves so let me see let me uh, let me just take an, another moment then in terms of groups for those for those of you who may be new to groups or running groups um we probably haven't got time to address that clearly enough in this session i think it's um the the, the nuts and bolts of, of facilitating enabling groups for me is complex it's fun it's challenging and it's even more exaggerated in in virtual because you know you're just a sea of faces how do we how do we be in touch and connect with each other and as supervisors how do we create a container to enable trust connection and thus learning from being together and from each other and I think we've been so fortunate in a way with this phenomenon, this pandemic, because we've learned to learn with more than just me and thee. We've learned to learn in community. We've learned to learn in teams. We've learned to learn in 
I don't know, breakout rooms. I don't know how many of you got into a breakout room with people you've never met before. And isn't it fabulous? You're going to have the most amazing conversation and your gray cells are working and you're connecting and you'll go away and you'll be different as a result of that exchange. So again, I'm thinking I must stop talking. You, you, you know, we've got so much wisdom here. Um, I'd like now, if I may, now that you've seen the map, the, the map will come, you can have a look at that again later. Um, how about we go into the breakouts again, and these will be random, so only a, a half a minute each on who are you, because you've done that. Um, you're here because you want to explore groups and group supervision. How about you go and have a look and, and a conversation about how do you keep yourself fit for purpose? And what part does supervision play? And let's exchange your ideas about, you know, because I don't hold a door. You know, I do Pilates and personal training and therapy and walking and blah, blah, blah. And all of you will have wonderful ways that you're doing this. And you, how are you doing this? And let's exchange some of this um, before we then go on and look at in more depth what group supervision can bring, not as the be all and end all, but as a process that supports any of us in, in the practice. Before you go, there's something here about really inquiring, yes, about your own approach to how you're taking care of yourselves, but with your experience of group supervision, what are you aware of? What are you noticing? What are you learning? Because when we did the poll, most of you are involved in groups one way or another. So there's great experience here amongst you all. And Drop anything down that you would like to contribute to the wider conversation, and I'll be quiet for a second. <laughs> second, you know. <laughs> Cats are great listening partners. <laughs> So nature, self-caring, who holds us when we hold others exactly, love, groups of an extra important as a place you can hear your voice, walking in open spaces, creative work, see you've got it all, you know it all. <laughs> coaching, friends, family, movies, silence, music. It's so rich, isn't it? And do we give ourselves time? Lovely. Okay. I was some, thank you so much for this and we'll have there'll be a moment for you to save some of these ideas at the end uh, the thing that the thing that I'd, I'd like to sort of kick off with at this stage is this um, the fact that several of you have um, have have very kindly acknowledged that you now have to go and do something else and I think that's personifies the world that we're in at the moment. Mm. We have so many things on, so many places to go, so many webinars to attend, so many workshops to do, so many calls to make, cat to feed, dog to feed, shopping, family schooling, uh, walk in nature, play some music. Ah, oh. and I'm highlighting that if you like, because it takes me to a place of what is, what is the power of sitting with a small group of professional colleagues to pause and reflect and listen and not have to get anywhere. And I think that's one of the most powerful 
phenomenon, phenomena of either individual or group supervision. We do, and I don't know, those of you who are supervisors may have noticed in the last year, folks come to supervision with me and it's so clear that they, <laughs> we don't want to get anywhere. We don't have to grab at a goal or an outcome or a get something done. This is a place to just breathe and pause and acknowledge being in contact and being with each other and letting go of the hurly-burly of the world that we are living in. Wherever it is, I mean, I can, I'm, some of you, I know you're in different parts of the world, Canada, North America, Europe, UK, Ireland. Sorry if I've left any of you out, but crikey, this is so gorgeously rich, but pinging away, my brain is pinging. So what do I do after this session? Oh, I'm not quite going to have a lie down, but you know, there's something about acknowledging how exciting and at the same time demanding this is, even though I'm not physically moving anywhere. And I think perhaps we might underestimate the impact of how we're able to capitalize and make use of the phenomena, the technology, the circumstances, and at the same time, oh, can I just breathe out and rest? Even if it's 15 minutes, even if it's 20 minutes. Yesterday, I, I, I had a morning session with a group and I had an afternoon session with a group <laughs> and I have to admit, I hadn't done this for a while. It got to about one o'clock and I thought, gosh, I'm tired. So, <laughs> so I, I went and had a kip in the middle of the afternoon before I met with my group in the uh, later afternoon. And I felt so much more refreshed, parked the guilt on the, on the landing, left the guilt on the landing, had a bit of a kip and came back refreshed. So there's something about... Um, there's no perfect way. And what do we notice our own needs are and what part then does group supervision play? And what I'm picking up from the, the, the chat here is actually the conversations you valued with each other. And that for me is, in, it, some level is the difference between group supervision and one-to-one -one. and personally I value one-to-one -one supervision hugely um, and part of that comes back to my own history I was one of five children so I want dedicated airtime please I don't want to share my reflection time with the, the rest of my family in inverted commas so I work one-to-one -one in supervision, but I have peer groups that I exchange, dialogue, have conversation with. Others find it's absolutely much more relevant to be in a group because our supervisor doesn't see it all. We don't see it all. So why not get four or five perspectives, none of which might be right, any of which might be useful, and stimulate, inspire, motivate each of us as we bring an issue, a, a confusion, uh, something that we're not sure about, when we're feeling stuck, and hear different ways that we can gain insight, gain awareness, develop something new, a new approach to a particular circumstance and a new approach to who we are ourselves in practice. Let me pause for a moment. One of the questions that's come out I've noticed today is how do we deal with a group when there are multiple levels of experience? Um, many of you as coach, uh, of your training coaches, you're going to have students who are relatively new to coaching. So you have some parity perhaps. 
but other times you may invite people to come and join a group. And what do we do with a supervisee who is relatively new to coaching and you have somebody who has been around the block a lot or not? Um, I guess, let me speak from my own point of view. Uh, I have a bias here. I think it is um, challenging and demanding to have a very wide range of experience in the room because the needs may, may differ. And I am careful not to be critical of the diverse range of need. And at the same time, if I'm experienced as a practitioner and I come to group and I have a colleague in the group who is brand new and wants to know more about open-ended questions, I may not feel as an experienced practitioner that it's reciprocal. And I'm sure there will be others of you who would say there's great learning from the beginner as there is great learning from the experience and I cite my own preference there and it's not right or wrong and how you feel comfortable is absolutely needs to feel okay for you. Personally I prefer to have a balance of experience uh, because the challenge to each other is different, the sense of connection is different and the needs are diverse in terms of, of some parity I guess is, is my own preference but again it's not right it's not wrong other people will have other preferences so let me let me pause for a minute and somebody is applauding me for my power nap thank you very much <laughs> Um, so let's hear, please enter this conversation. We'll be going back into one more breakout. You can have some more exciting conversation with somebody else, uh, other people in a moment, but anybody like to jump in and contribute here? Please jump in. I can't see you all, so. Um, Alison, hi, it's Komal here. Hello. Hi, so. So when I entered and I started, I was like, mm, I'm new to this space and I'm curious to learn more about where and how supervision sits in our experiences as coaches. And with listening to what others have to share and the map that you showed and the perspective that you put in place, it in itself feels like a group, sort of a group supervision where we are learning from shared wisdom shared experiences and as a beginner it's it's shifting my perspective already and I'm like mm, no 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 so I have been in supervision places somewhere as participate participate and somewhere as supervising other people by just by the way of sharing Lovely. and what has really worked so far is the purpose that you put in space by putting us in the space as to what do we want to derive out of the support and supervision it's making the rest of the thing become so very clear that then how do I show up as a supervisor when I am in that space? Because what is the purpose that other person would want to take away? Lovely. So that's... Thank you. That's, that's what has done for me so far. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's lovely. Would anybody else like to add to this? When you're supervising a group, do you ever or should we ever, and what's the benefit of having the group look at itself as a group? Well, yes, often, lovely question, thank you. So if you would elaborate on that, because I could imagine people learning from the more experienced, less experienced. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. So Vanessa's, Vanessa's question is about, we don't necessarily look at a client issue that one person brings. We say, what is going on in the group from which we can learn? Uh, and I'm now going to share with you an, 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 an invitation that I've sent to a group just recently. We're halfway through a series and my questions were, what was your intention in coming? How has this evolved and changed? Then the next question is, what impact do you feel you're having in the group? What impact are others having on you? 
and how do you want to learn from our relationships that will inform how you show up out there? Is, does that, I'm seeing you nodding, Vanessa, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely question. And I may be, it's not meant, I mean, a newer coach needs different input usually and that's a generalization but so an experience the groups that i've asked that question of we've been talking they've been really supportive and really helpful and helping lots of learning from each other about a client situation or a team or something and i want to know what impact they're having on each other that will inform how they may be impacting on their clients or their clients may be impacting on them. Because for me, this is the only reality. What people bring to supervision, and I include that, we inevitably edit. You know, I can't tell my supervisor all the things that have gone on in a client scenario, but I can respond to her and she can respond to me and say, Alyssa, I notice when you're talking about this, I'm, I'm hearing an edge or I'm hearing you're sounding doubtful or I wonder if you're a little bit angry with that client because that's all we've got. What goes on out there is what we have experienced as a practitioner and we then inevitably edit for all sorts of reasons coming into supervision. And that's not meant critically. I can't tell the whole story. My supervisor wasn't there. So there's something about how do I and my client or how me and my supervisor impact on each other that will inform how I might be showing up. So I speak as a personal experience, but it's also imagine the richness. So if we got five of you in a room talking about the impact that you have on each other. <laughs> and clearly it needs containment, it needs contracting, it needs agreement about how are we going to do this? And it's from a place, it's what is our intention in doing this? that allows us to deepen our awareness of ourselves and thus the impact we may be having on others. So I don't know, I'm seeing you nodding, Vanessa. So thank you for the question. Um, we've got about 10 more minutes and I was going to do another breakout, but would, uh, are you happy, uh, just do a quick show of, are you happy if we stay in this conversation with question and answer? Because, okay, I'm looking at one screen. Yeah, um, Alison, may I? Yeah. Okay, Tim. Um, Alison, could you tell me um, how important do you think it is to, uh, for a facilita facilitator to know how to check for mutual understanding uh, during the process of, of um um, uh, the group uh, supervision because I find that nowadays in uh, the groups we are getting not only uh, multiple level of experience but also multiple level of approach to life. Young people have different approach to life than, than, than the older generation have and I think it is so much important um, to, to get to check the mutual understanding during that process of um, of group supervision. Uh, what well, is your experience on this? Yep, that's lovely, Tim, because actually it's not just the new young people coming into the world of coaching or into the world of work. I would say assumption making is endemic in the jargon that we all have. So I'm talking group supervision. I could wrap myself over the knuckles and say, well, I didn't start this session with a generic agreed definition of supervision, I made an assumption that you had some curiosity about this phenomenon called group supervision. And for those of you who were new to supervision, I'm delighted if we've whet your appetite. Mm -hmm. I'm working on the okay. basis that in inverted commas, you know about it, you appreciate its relevance, its value and its place 
in different contexts. I think we need to be a checking understanding, mutual understanding every step of the way. That's right. I've been I've been with a with a group the other day and somebody said, oh, well, I have this assignment and I, um, I'm doing a group. I'm doing a group coaching assignment. And I saw people just saying, yeah. And I said, well, hang on a minute. In your context, with your client, what was group coaching? What, what, is, what are you and the client agreeing you're going to do? Hmm. Is it facilitation? Is it team? Is it team building? Is it group process? Is it a happy, clappy away day? Is it a training session? So... And that's with folks who are experienced. So, mm -hmm. and this person actually comes from is different. You know, I, I'm sure many of you have have noticed we have a huge um, awareness raising, and I have been part of this conversation about the growth in team coaching. Well, wow. oh, it's divine to get a definition of team coaching because we've all got different definitions of it and then our client the organization ceo comes in and says well i want you to do some team coaching and you ask them what they want well let's spend a bit of time asking about what they mean and what do we mean and do they and we mean the same thing and do the people in the team mean the same thing so and i mean that's again the value of group supervision because I can have six people in the room and six different definitions. And six people have got a different definition and then they've all read a different book. But what about this person? What about that person? And have you read this paper? And I bet you don't know that paper. And have you looked at this reference? And do you know this journal and that journal and this website and that? It's where it's spoiled with what's available and at any stage, we need to check, what are we both talking about? And I've committed the cardinal sin today because I didn't give you a common definition of supervision. I'm afraid I just, I just went with it. <laughs> and in the different countries and the different practices, I know some of you, you know, you're from different locations. You've got different ideas of how is supervision and group supervision done. And I know, you know, there are folks from, from Holland, there are folks from France, there are folks from America. I know you have different relationships, A, with supervision, B, with groups, and C, what's the purpose of it? Mm. And at the heart of today, I hope, is something around how do we take care of ourselves and group supervision is an absolutely valuable way of supporting ourselves in keeping fit for purpose because if we don't take care of ourselves how do we go out and do our best work with our clients who need such a lot or not we may be projecting our need onto them so there's a provocateur so are we going to help because we want to help or are we going to help because they know the help that they've asked for or not so i think that's an, that's another session okay <laughs> May, may I jump in on that? Yes, one? please do. <laughs> uh, that was to bottom line what we discussed in the breakout room. <laughs> we talked about so the cost of caring. We talked about self-care, self-flow. And then like, what is that? Uh, and and I, I cannot speak on behalf of the group. But for me, at least uh, the outcome of that session was that, hmm, I, I'm projecting. I, I, it's much easier to support other people than finding out what's important for me uh, when it comes to self-care. So, yeah, just wanted to say that that resonates. Thank you. So we're Good. coming to the end of our time here. I'm sure you're dying to say more and we're going to carry on. You're going to be able to have a chance to have a chat for the next half an hour after this. Colleague Catherine Downing from the North America and I are going to be doing a developing self as group supervisor with coaching supervision academy and if you have any questions or you want more immediate information for those of you who are interested in developing as 
as group supervisors. Um, I'm doing a couple of tasters in the next couple of weeks and again in June with Coaching Supervision Academy and then in the autumn Catherine and I are running a three module program in group supervision and developing self as practitioner or supervisor. So there's my little blurb okay there's my ad for the, for the session. Um, Alison, thank you. That was oh, that was amazing to be able to spend that time with you, and and I just love the way it came. So much of it came from your heart and your thoughts in the moment. On behalf of EMCC Global, Alison, thank you so much for leading this important dialogue. I've heard that it's only the beginning of so much more, and I know you will be available to facilitate those as well. So thank you all to all of you who attended. Yes. This was it wouldn't have been what it was without you. These sessions are really a place for us to explore in great depth. And Alison, your leadership in this topic is really appreciated. So thank you. And it was lovely seeing so many of you again. Take care, everyone.